Hey guys, this is MJ. He's truly. I hope you guys are doing amazing today. Still sick. Still have that C. Big old C. But Jesus is greater. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Um, Alan still is testing positive also. But um, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Greater is the army that is with us than the army that is against us. I decided to come out here, get some fresh air, and just talk to y'all. I've um, been reading all of your comments and your suggestions. And um, we so appreciate your prayers on our behalf. It has been rough, guys. Let me tell you, when I tell you rough, um, I have never had this, um, this COVID um, since the pandemic, never had it um, remain unvaxxed. Even as a nurse, I was not required to take the vax. And um, if I had been required, would not take it. Um, and, um, that's just the way it is. I won't take a flu shot either. There's just too much going on in these final moments of the end of this dispensation of the church age. Um, who's ready to go home? I'm ready to go home, guys. And I know that we are so, so very close. And I was so excited to get on here and talk to y'all today. Um, I was trying to do it yesterday, but I'm so weak. And I appreciate y'all's prayers. I mean, just to make it from the couch to the refrigerator and I know how y'all are identifying with me because so many of you guys have had this um and have had it several times and I can sympathize with you guys because um this knocked me through a loop and I'm typically a very strong person being a nurse for 30 years I've had probably every immunity that I can you know can count Anyways, thank you guys for your prayers. Truly, from the bottom of our hearts, um, Alan didn't expect to get it either. He's as strong as a bull. Um, he's always taking his vitamins. We're taking zinc, vitamin D3, um, every vitamin, vitamin C. Um, and we've added to our repertoire of vitamins. Um, we're taking the pine needle tea now. We've taken a lot of y'all's suggestions too, so thank you. Um, and we also had right in our immediate area within 10 miles we had the tornadoes happen here in panama city beach so devastating devastating for our community thankfully our home wasn't touched but it's just almost a reenactment of michael hurricane michael five years ago and in the same exact area which is really tragic tragic for that area um so continue to pray for them and lift them up. Um, guys, things are going to get exponentially worse. We know that normal is not coming back. Jesus Christ is coming back. Jesus said that these things would be happening at the end, and they are happening. So we shouldn't be shocked. Um, 2024 has just begun and has begun with a bang for us. And it has begun with a bang for this United States and all over this world. Um, Israel is surrounded by her enemies. And we know that when this happens, Jesus said, lift up your heads and look up for your redemption draws nigh. We have arrived, guys. We're here. This channel is 100% pre-trib. That means that the church does not go through the tribulation. I don't care what anybody says. It is 100% biblical that we are not appointed to wrath. All right, that means that trumpet's going to sound. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we, this final generation, I believe with all of my heart, we who are alive and remain will be caught up with them in those clouds and ever so be with our Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words, encourage one another as we see the day approaching. And that day is approaching. It could be today. It could be before this video is over for this reason i share the gospel if you are not born again jesus christ said you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven this channel is not about religion it has nothing to do with religion it's not about um works we're not saved by works we're saved by grace alone through faith alone in christ alone 
It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, which, which is a shocker to a lot of people because a lot of people try to climb that ladder to heaven. They think there's a stairway to heaven that, you know, you need to earn brownie points with God. And um, depending upon how you were raised or depending upon what religion that you grew up in, um, this isn't about religion once again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe should not perish but have everlasting life. Simple as that. We all live eternally. This life here that we live right here is a breath, a vapor. It's but a morning cloud. It's here and it's gone. But we live eternally. Where we choose to live is the biggie, heaven or hell. God doesn't put anybody in hell. We choose. All right, so our will is the most the greatest gift God has ever given any of us. So choose today where you will live eternally. Um, because you, tomorrow's not promised. We could walk out the door today and today could be our last day upon this earth. And we need to know where we're going to live eternally. With who? Live with the one who gave his life for you. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Okay? who gave his life for you. How do you do that? The Bible says that we're all born into this condition called sin. So, and we need to be born again. Born again into what? How? We're born again into a condition called righteousness, which is not even our own righteousness. It's Christ's righteousness, which is when we come to Christ, he covers us with his righteousness. And it's not like we're rehabbed. It's not like our flesh is rehabbed because we can't rehab the old man. A old nature can never be rehabbed. So it's not like we're, it's not behavior modification. It's not, um, you know, penance for our deeds, um, rehabbing the, you know, for sins that we did before. Uh, we're new creations created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared before the foundations of this earth. Are we saved by those works? Absolutely not. We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But there's a lot of ministers out there teaching differently a false gospel. And that false gospel trips a lot of people up. And they just end up wandering out of the church. And that population would be called a prodigal. Because once they come to Christ... We're eternally secure at the moment of salvation. The Holy Spirit seals us eternally. Okay, eternally. We don't lose our salvation. Despite, regardless of what people tell you, regardless of what those ministers tell you, there are ministers, Satan has ministers of his own righteousness in the church. Okay, behind many a pulpit. And that's why prodigals just walk out the door because they can't maintain their salvation. They can't be good enough. No kidding. None of us can. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, not some of us. And it takes the Holy Spirit's power. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit to bring about that change in our life. And when we're discouraged because we can't bring about that change, what do we do? We walk out that door. But Jesus is the door. So we walked in that door. Okay? And he cleansed us of all unrighteousness our sins past present and future forgiven on that cross but the problem is my people perish for lack of knowledge so we walk out the door and we end up in the world doing what the world does and have no understanding that God completely has forgiven our sins past present and future um, at the cross and we still belong to him because at the moment of salvation we become his sons and daughters, okay? So we're adopted into his very own family. I don't know what that noise is over there, but... <coughs> so once we're adopted into the family of God, God does not abort his own children. So understand that. So if you're not born again, very simply admit, yes, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of our sin is death, eternal separation from God. So, B is to believe, and this is key, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. Um, and C, call upon his name. 
The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, not might be saved, not might be saved if you complete this program, not might be saved if you join this church. You are a member of the body of Christ the moment that you join, the moment that you say I do to Jesus Christ. It's not joining a church. You become the church. All over this world, all over this globe, we are the body of Christ, the church, the bride of Christ. And Jesus is about to call us up. He said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. We're about to see that place. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. I don't know what that noise is, but if you haven't done that, I would highly recommend that you do that today because that trumpet could sound before this video is over and we'll be gone. And I know, I really believe with all of my heart that it will be in my lifetime. And I do believe that it will be soon and very soon that the rapture will occur. And people say, um, you know, there is no rapture. It's not in the Bible. Neither is the word Bible in the Bible. And neither is the word Trinity in the Bible. But we know the word Trinity um, is doctrinal. We know the word Bible is doctrinal. So uh, rapture is very biblical, guys. All right, so... If you're not subscribed, please subscribe so that we can get this, the gospel um, algorithms, I guess it is algorithms. I see that like half of you have subscribed and, and half of you aren't. So if you want to be notified, like when I get on here, um, I try to get on here like five times a week, several times a week anyway, when I'm not sick, I've had COVID for a week, but I don't know what that noise is, but of course it's going to happen when I'm out here nice and quiet till I get here, right? Um, sounds like one of those cars, you know, that kids get when they're little, maybe somebody got for Christmas, but, whoo, hope it's not that bothersome to you. But anyway, if you're not subscribed, please hit subscribe and you will be notified as to, um, and that also helps the gospel algorithms going to get the gospel out there. So, you know, if you're not born again, you're buried alive in your own stuff. Okay, in your own garbage, in your own unforgiveness, um, we must be born again. And let me tell you, it is not an experience that you just walk away from. It is a journey with Christ that is eternal. And it's not some cult. It's not some, you know, something that you just forget. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. See how quiet it is now. Anyway, um... But a lot of people are buried alive in their own garbage, in their own sins, in their own unforgiveness. And that is, there's so much hatred in this world, guys. People can just walk in such lawlessness, walk into a convenience store or, or a, a school and just start shooting. Jesus said lawlessness would increase in the last days. We have arrived. We have arrived at the place where Jesus said would be happening in the last days. The earthquakes is off the charts. This has nothing to do with climate change, guys. Absolutely nothing. The earth is groaning. The earth is groaning. Labor pains as a woman in labor. Remember that. At the end of her labor, the ring of fire. Israel is surrounded by her enemies. Okay, so um, all these things that are happening right now are a precursor to the tribulation. What's happening, we're sitting right now in the shadow of the tribulation. We are also sitting in the shadow of the Almighty, those of us who are saved. Um, we are all sitting in the shadow of the Almighty. But those who aren't saved, who are not born again, um, the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance, that word is thrown around so very much in the church. Um, and it's used for the clergy's um, benefit, you know, for money and for just different things. Repentance is metanoia, change of mind in the Greek, okay? You change your mind about who God is. Um, you can't get saved by Buddha, Muhammad, Allah. Uh, the prayers of your ancestors, reincarnation, any of those things. 
and God will change your heart because the heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it but God? You can't change your own heart. We can't change. We don't have the power to change our heart. Okay? So we change our mind that, yes, okay, I do need a Savior. I do believe Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead for my own personal sins. I do believe that. The moment you believe that, you become born again. Okay? So that is what repent means. Change your mind from what you are currently believing to believe what the truth is, the gospel. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, that he was buried, and on the third day rose again, according to scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation. God didn't make it hard, guys. God made it very easy. Religion complicated it. Our flesh complicates it. Um, this is not about religion. This is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, so what happened here in the Panhandle is a tragedy. Um, the tornadoes five years after the horrendous Michael, you know, it's just, it was very scary enough waking up and listening to these winds and the howling and the dead silence at times with that weather. Um, but imagine the terror of waking up. I don't know if you guys saw that um, I posted one of the drone footage, but imagine waking up to your roof being lifted off. Alan and I were talking about this last night. Um, plus being this sick, waking up and your roof is gone. I mean, so just please keep our community in your prayers and your thoughts and prayers. And I appreciate all of you. I know all, a lot of you have been praying and, and commenting about it. Um, it'll be rough, but God, the church will soon, very soon be lifted out of here. <coughs> and all of this mess, this nightmare will be behind us. There is major escalation in Israel. One of the lead commanders of Hezbollah was killed. Another one was killed in Syria. Um... They're finding manufacturing facilities under humanitarian buildings. Um, just continue to pray for Israel and the lost because this war is a spiritual war, guys. And this war is far from over. Far from over. Iceland and 3,000 earth earthquakes in the last 48 hours. Not even on the news, per se, that I see. Uh, floods, fires, massive storms, volcanoes, it's all playing out right before our very eyes. If you don't know Jesus Christ, come to him today. I would not wait. I wouldn't play around with it. Um, it's everything is in the Bible, guys. It's being prophesied. The prophecy is being played out right before our very eyes. Um... This is a spiritual battle. Um, if your kids happen to listen to Little Nas, that is blatant, blatant blasphemy. Um, I pray for him, but don't let your kids listen to him. Okay, he's got that new demonic promo mocking the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, and it's just pure blasphemy on his new album. I don't know, I just happened to see it. Um, looking on Twitter or X. So much going on, guys, in these final moments. I pray that you're journaling. I miss Sunday, but I try to come on here for a minute on Monday. We're on the letter B. B, the battle belongs for the, to the Lord. Well, we're on the letter C now. So, I think of something with C. Sunday will be C. All right, so... This Sunday was letter B. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we're blessed no matter what. We're blessed beyond the curse. We're blessed beyond anything we can ask, think, or ever imagine. Because in the twinkling of an eye when we're out of here, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. So no matter what you're going through right now, understand that Jesus is still in the boat. No matter how high the waves are, no, don't look at the water. Don't look at the waves. Understand that he's still in the boat. He's not sleeping. He's not sleeping. He knows what's going on. He's in control. And his timing is perfect. All right? A lot of us thought we would be out of here in 2023. 
me. I, I really thought, you know, this is this is it. But you know, and I'm not a date setter. I don't set dates, and you know, um, I set a date with Jesus every day. But guys, it, it is certainly looking like 2024. I mean, the fact that we're even in 2024 is, is just amazing. But I'm going to read to you from Behold Thine Enemy, my third book. All right. And this is about a prodigal. You might be a prodigal. I was a prodigal for many years, guys. A lot of you know that. <coughs> Behold thine enemy and literally get the hell out of your own way. What you don't know can hurt you. Living proof that not all who wander are lost. Remember, you're not the first one that he has tried to deceive. That story started long ago in the garden with Adam and Eve. You might be a prodigal if you feel like you're on the outside looking in. You've abandoned the idea of going to a traditional church. You're enslaved to an addiction that you're con you've convinced yourself you can't get out of. Remember, Satan's a liar. You've been sexually, physically, emotionally abused. A recording in your head keeps telling you it's too late to turn back now. You're suicidal and or depressed, feel abandoned, rejected, financially distraught. You've given up all hope of ever changing. You feel like God's mad at you. Remember, Satan's a liar. You're angry at God for taking someone or something away from you. You mock Christianity. Most importantly, you accepted Jesus Christ at one time in your life, fully embracing the gospel of your salvation forgetting that you were permanently born into the Father's divine family the moment you believed that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, imputing his own righteousness in place of yours, and will be returning very soon to rapture his church. Jesus Christ never forfeited his end of the deal. Regardless of the distance we wandered, the gospel of our salvation was never a feeling. It's always been a fact. A covenant that Jesus Christ made with his Father. A covenant that nothing or no one has the power to erase. For at that moment in eternity, we pass from spiritual death to spiritual life. And our names were permanently written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we were sealed forever. Amazing, isn't it? And we did absolutely nothing but believe. Wake up from your slumber, child of God. Don't let the enemy put you in a spiritual checkmate. Jesus Christ already won. Remember, it is finished. FYI, it doesn't matter who or what led you down that wrong road. God's amazing grace allows for U-turns. Most importantly, if you're not currently a Christian, you will very soon be left behind in this world to endure the darkest of nights in the rapidly approaching seven-year tribulation. Why suffer inevitable wrath when salvation is simple as the ABCs? Hebrews 10, 14, for by one offering he has perfected forever, forever, them that are sanctified. Please don't stop, doubt your salvation a lot. That enemy uses that, okay? Doubting your salvation. You did not earn your salvation. You cannot maintain your salvation. That's up to Jesus Christ. So don't play God and act like you're you have the potential to lose your salvation and don't allow anyone to trick you into that Satan. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. Remember, he can't take your salvation, but he can take your joy. He can take your peace. So understand, when you understand the eternal security of the believer, I can promise you that the joy and the peace of the Lord surpasses all understanding okay the peace of god that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through christ jesus and nothing and no one has the power to take that from you regardless of what's going on whether you got covid whether you're bankrupt regardless of what's going on okay god is always with us and god has the power to change everything in a moment, in a nanosecond, everything that the enemy means for harm and has meant for harm in our entire life, God will change for his own glorious good. And he does that here on earth. Romans 8, 28, my favorite scripture. God causes all things to work together for good 
for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Are we called according to his purpose? Absolutely. A lot of us wandered out there. We got in a lot of messes. We got in a lot of trouble, a lot of addiction. Um, and you know, we reap what we sow here on earth. And a lot of us have paid consequences for things that we've done here on earth. And a lot of us have dodged a lot of bullets and God has allowed grace to prevail in our life. But we do reap what we sow here. Um, there's consequences to what we do, but God walks us through it. He walks with us. He's with us. And his presence is greater than any crime that we have to pay the consequences for or, you know, suffer here on earth for. And, you know, I'd rather be delivered and born again and walking with Christ and in a jail cell than not born again and behind bars. I mean, and, and not born again and walking free. I'd rather be born again and behind prison bar cells because he who the sun sets free is free indeed so whether you're behind prison bar cells you can be free in Christ and those bar cells in front of you they represent nothing but time okay because he who the sun sets free is free indeed and wherever we are if we belong to Christ and when he sets us free we are free indeed Nobody can set us free. No counselor, uh, no teacher, no, no one has the power to set us free like Jesus Christ. All right, so religion won't save us. Um, we can't depend on anything in life, our status in life. There's nothing good in us that by a formula or program that we can ever even return to. We must be born again. There is only one name that saves and only one way to heaven, and that name is Jesus Christ, the eternally existing God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What you don't know can hurt you. This book isn't as much about getting lost people saved as it is about locating and educating saved people getting lost. Being informed or staying deceived is a choice, and that choice, my friend, is a matter of spiritual life or death. Choose wisely. I'm going to read one more. Okay. Behold. Behold means to see as if for the first time. The word behold occurs 1,326 times in the King James Version of the Bible. To perceive, to pay attention, to inspect, to examine, to know, to turn one's eyes to, to see about, to have regard for. No sympathy for the devil. My, my, what a big mouth God Almighty has redeemed. My life wasn't as, worth as worthless as you made it once seem. I pray that every black sheep within the sound of my voice becomes radically loosened from your grip and able to make a free choice. I bet you never realized when you bound me up in chains that my life would be an instrument to spare others from your pain. I bet you never noticed as you pushed me further into that grave that my heart was transcribing notes that God in his mercy had saved. I bet it never occurred to you when you tempted me into your land that God would call me to be an eyewitness and one day take the stand. I'm almost compelled to thank you, Satan, for pushing me so hard to that ground, for had I not been in the dirt, my Savior's mercy I may not have ever found. So it is in humble adoration I dedicate each word transcribed within these pages to the faithful, faithful shepherd of the flock, the lamb ordained before the ages. The rulers of this world couldn't have known the end of his story. For had they had known the great mystery of God, they wouldn't have crucified my Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. All right, we're at 29 minutes. I'm not going to take much longer. I'm just going to read one more at the end. <coughs> uh, 
And I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day, regardless of what's going on. Know that the joy of the Lord is our strength, and we need to have the joy of the Lord. And Jesus said, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as this world gives. Don't let that peace be forfeited. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, and guys, he did that, all right? So if the devil has ever tried to shut you up, beat you up, put a gag order on you, rest assured, beloved, your calling is tremendous. Salvation's road is indeed narrow, but once we're on it, we are eternally on it. Some of us sit down on the road and go about our daily lives. Others walk backwards, sidewards, while others rest in the bushes, hide in the alleys, or stubbornly refuse to move forward on this narrow road. But we can be certain that we remain firmly fixed on salvation's road because of one reason alone, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, this world's only savior. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise. Salvation is eternal. God's front porch. And this was actually a dream I had. And I share this with a lot of my videos because Jesus is coming soon, guys. Very soon. The rapture and the second coming are two separate events. The rapture happens first. Seven years later, the second coming will happen okay you don't want to be here for the seven year tribulation so you want to go in the rapture you don't want to be here when they say millions of people have disappeared and aliens have abducted them aliens are the demonic realm okay understand that there's no such thing as aliens god's front porch as i stood upon god's front porch the voice said enter in the light inside became so brilliant, clearly exposing my guilt and sin. Looking down at my filthy garments, I turned and started to run. I knew that I was unworthy, so ashamed of the things I'd done. Startled by his presence, there my Savior stood. I fell to my knees when I saw him, just as I knew that anyone would. His voice was so very gentle, his eyes so full of grace. He looked at me and spoke softly. Enter in, child, your sins I've erased. As I stood on God's porch sobbing, it all became so clear. All that I learned about him in Sunday school. Yes, my Savior was finally here. As I looked back across the threshold at the multitude standing in line, my Heavenly Father embraced me as he welcomed me in to dine. Father, why is Jesus crying? What has made him grieve? Where are all these people going? Why must they all leave? His reply will forever remain embedded in my tender spirit. Child, every sin they have ever committed today they must each one bear it for them my son's death has been in vain by his blood they could have been saved he must now say goodbye eternally to the ones who've rejected his name oh father i'm so very grateful i cried so unworthy to be in your home as i bowed my head in worship i felt my tears touch his very throne i woke up in a panic and i heard the spirit say go tell the ones you saw standing in line that my blood has paved the way Tell them about the banquet and how I've saved them all a seat. Tell them that I have paid in full to prevent this eternal defeat. Tell them that I am knocking. They must soon answer the door. Behold, I am coming quickly and time will be no more. Luke 13, 25, but when the head of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. Then you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us. But he will reply, I do not know you. Guys, Satan is a liar. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay? He is a liar. He has been a liar from the beginning. He plants thoughts in our heads. There is no God. God doesn't love you. You're not really saved. That didn't take. If you were really saved, you wouldn't be doing all this stuff. You wouldn't be sinning. You wouldn't be doing this. You wouldn't have these thoughts. Well, isn't it? something that he puts thoughts in our head and then blames us when we carry them out you know the bible calls him the accuser of the brethren he stands before god day and night accusing the brethren know who your enemy is but greater know who your savior is your best friend your guide your comforter your counselor the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness, past, present, and future sins. As Jesus is coming soon and very soon, are you ready?
rapture ready? Are you born again? And there is no partial rapture, guys. Don't believe that garbage, not for a second. There is no partial rapture. The whole church, the entire body of Christ is going in the rapture. Okay, know that I am praying for you and yours. And I so, so appreciate, can't thank you enough for your prayers on behalf of our family. Um, God bless you guys. Until next time, love you. Keep looking up.